Hello and welcome to another NMC devotion. I think let us start off in prayer. Father, as we spend this time together, I ask that you would speak into the heart of each person who is watching the devotion. I ask that as you show us what it is that you want us to learn from the message, and that you help us then to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. It really is great to be able to share another weekly devotion with you. And for those of you who have religiously tuned in to watch these devotions, I would like to extend a thank you to you. And I hope that they continue to be a blessing in your journey. And I pray that the few words that I'm going to share to you now are going to be beneficial either to you or perhaps to someone that you know who you could share these words with. Let us start off by turning to the reading. I'm going to be reading from 1 Kings 2 and reading from verse 1 through to 4. And when the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon, his son. I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said, so be strong. Act like a man and observe what the Lord, your God, requires. Walk in obedience to him. Keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations, as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all that you do. And wherever you go, and that the Lord may keep his promise to you. If your descendants watch how they live, and if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. I'd like to have a chat around two areas which appealed to me when I sat with this reading. What David shared with Solomon, and then what happened thereafter. I ask the question, what makes a good leader? And if I were to ask you to list 10 people from the Bible who you think are good leaders or influential people, I'd have a guess that David's name probably pops up. David comes across to me as a man's man, a larger-than-life character. Growing up, we know David as a faithful shepherd. He was a gifted songwriter and musician. He was a giant slayer. As an adult, we got to know him as he led armies and won wars. He was successful as a politician and became an honored king. Yes, there were times that he resembled all of us in the mistakes that he made and his sins, but he always led with integrity as we read in Psalm 78 verse 72. With an upright heart, he shepherded them and guided them with a skillful hand. From our reading, we see that David is in his last days and he calls for his son Solomon as he wants to share the wisdom and the knowledge that he has with his son before he dies about what it will take for Solomon to also be a great leader, to be as great as David was. These are big shoes to fill and if I was Solomon having to take over from David, I think I would have arrived there with my notebook ready to take the notes and the strategies that David would have shared, the plans, the wisdom and motivation which someone like David could have given me that I could maybe use. But David makes no reference to how to win wars, make lots of money or fame, how to get people to listen and follow you. He doesn't speak about glory. He simply says to Solomon, walk in obedience, follow God and you will prosper. Do this and you will be successful. Solomon receives the best advice that he possibly could, directly from the source, David's mouth, and goes on to become even a better leader because he had the answer to how to be successful, without making mistakes or sinning. But the story doesn't quite go like that, does it? We read in Samuel 2, sorry, 2 Samuel 7, I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. If he sins, I will correct and discipline him with the rod, like any father would do. But my favor will not be taken from him. Your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all time, and your throne will be secure forever. So even though God demanded that the king of his people obey him perfectly, the Lord also promised to still show grace when the king would inevitably fail. And this leads me on to my second point. Where have we seen this story before? Well, everywhere. Church leaders, our country's leaders, 
So many are set up for great success with great promises, but so few remain safe from public disgraces and fallout and corruption because, like we are, we are human. We can all have the tools, but yet we still fail. Every day we have the ability to be called in order to hear the wise words that God has to share with us. Words of wisdom on how to cope, how to be successful, how to manage difficult situations, how to become better. And through prayers and access to the Bible, we do not have any excuses. In fact, with the amount of online content that is available to us in the various phone apps, we have no excuse. I'm sure when Solomon left David's side that day, he would have had every intention of doing what David had said. He would have wanted to live the way David had inspired him to. He wanted to have been able to do everything that David had said. But things get in our way. We're faced with challenges. Things steer us off our path. And as much as we try and be the best person that we attempt to be, there are always those things that are thrown in the way. But we have hope, as we read from Samuel 7, where it says, But my favor will not be taken away. And so I end off with a challenge that David gave Solomon. Walk in obedience and follow the laws of God. And when the obstacles and challenges come along and you stumble, know that you are not the first and that many successful leaders and people who God had chosen and put into places of authority have been in exactly the same place as you. And when you are there, what are we told? That God's favor will not be taken away from those who believe in him. Can we close in prayer? Lord, I thank you for all that you do for us, all that you provide us. And I pray that throughout each day you will help us in the constant battle against the temptations of greed, lust and power which the world uses as a definition of success. Help us remember that any success we have ultimately comes from you. Help us to change from what the world says we should be into the person that you want us to be. Amen.